You were born there? In Antonio? Huh? Angela laughed and shook her head. Me too. What a coincidence. I thought you were born in Mexico. That's where you were living when we hired you. And didn't you complete your postgraduate there? Brissa didn't reply. Is there a problem? Angela stared at her. Want me to hand the project over to your ex? Brissa stood and stared into the hallway. Employees walking past were talking to each other, enjoying their morning. Brissa stood by the door, and her memories flooded her vision as she watched herself fill a cup with coffee from that little kitchen only a few months ago. And when her body was completely out of control, her hands refused to stop shaking. The coffee splashed and stained her new white skirt. As her thoughts played out, Moreno stepped out of his office with a young female direct draped across his arm. Brissa took in a deep breath and sighed. The pressure of feeling smothered almost suffocated her. Could she be the one? Brissa, Angela said a little sterner, we will need an answer soon. It's not that I'm ungrateful. Brissa was once again doubting herself. She walked over to the plans and ran her fingers across the dark lines and small lettering. Yes, Angela, I accept. And thank you for the opportunity. Perfect! Angela slapped her hands onto the drawings. The secretary poked her head around the corner and whispered, The Honorable Mayor of Antonio, Mr. Pablo Minco, is here to see you. Five minutes, Angela waved. She turned to Brissa and looked directly at the trembling hands. You can do this. I trust in you, but you'll have to stop drinking. How did you... Everyone knows... She shook her head as she walked back over to the window. The question is, can you quit? Brissa nodded. I have a little self-will left. An attractive and tall man stood in the doorway and chuckled. He reached out his hand and Angela ran to accept it. Come in, Pablo, please meet Brissa Muriel, our lead architect for the project. The mayor extended his hand and smiled. Pablo, please. Yes. Brissa replied, stepping forward. We met once in Antonio when I was measuring the site. Sit, Pablo, Angela said, pushing the man toward a chair. Brissa will be our lead. Any updates on the permits? Two to go, he replied, nodding. Local licenses and easy enough to get from the National Council for the Protection of Antonio. Are you aware of our plans for the demolition? He looked directly at Brissa. Yes. What's left of the girls' boarding school must go, he said, raising his chin and smiling. The old mansion at the entrance? Brissa stepped over to the plans and studied the large sheets of paper. It's a beautiful colonial and I propose to save it for social events. Weddings and the like, she grinned at the mayor, would be perfect for an event hall or clubhouse. I conducted a structural study and the building is in great condition, would add a colonial touch to the project. Just a bunch of old mossy bricks, Angela stated. It all must go. The trimmers have already destroyed the upper floors. We're using the first floor for the temporary construction offices. I know, but it's just a very old house, Angela stated firmly. Not at all colonial. Demolishing that old convent may be a bit more of an issue. Could be considered heritage. Then again, it's located inside our parcel, and hopefully we're taking care of that problem. Correct, Pablo? The mayor glanced over at Angela and nodded. Does the architect know about the other obstacles? Brissa looked at the man and frowned. It felt odd having someone talk as if she wasn't in the room. Yes, Angela replied. Nothing our legal department can't handle. Angela glanced over at Brissa and sighed. A relative with the last name of Harader filed a lawsuit about the rights. Nothing to worry about. You'll supervise the demolition and the leveling of the land. After that, you'll proceed with the construction as depicted in your plans. Explain to Pablo your ideas for the project. Brissa hesitated. If no changed, the first six months will focus on the demolition of the abandoned town in the lower terrain by the hollow. Just small houses that once belonged to the workers, when the place with a farm, and a temporary supply road will need to be built. You don't have any issues with demolishing the old nunnery, the mayor asked. Are you religious? Brissa shook her head. I would appreciate it if you would consider retaining the old mansion and a few of the older buildings to add a little aesthetics. As for the boarding school, I have no objections. 
I spoke to the demolition company, and it would be easy to exclude the mansion and convent. I suggest you reconsider my proposal as a whole. We'll take a look at it, Angela said without paying much attention to Briss's proposal. I'm in favor of demolishing everything, Pablo stood and took in a deep breath. I don't like old buildings full of mold and asbestos and nasty little critters. Ironic, he laughed. With all the tremors lately, you'd think not much would be left. He walked over to the door and paused. I wish a strong one would hit. Get rid of those damn buildings once and for all. He walked back over to Brissa and patted her on the shoulder. Brissa nodded. I won't disappoint you. Since you'll be living in town, he winked. I'll see you often. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Pablo, he replied. Please, just Pablo. Brissa. Angela stepped between the two and smiled. Pablo is an active partner in our company. Indirectly, by way of another corporation, of course. <laughs> Being the mayor creates a slight conflict of interest. However, we simply overlook that here. Understand? Brissa stared at the woman. Once this development is finished, Angela added, let's consider the possibility of making you a full partner. What do you think, Brissa? Would you like that? I'll work to ensure that nothing hampers our plans, Brissa smiled. Nothing and nobody. Great! Then welcome to the Antonio Heights Project! Angela reached out and grabbed Brissa's hand. Brissa left the two standing together inside Angela's office. Angela was practically a stranger to her, and if she knew how fragile Brissa's emotional state was at the moment, the whole project could crash down around her. Brissa could not show anyone any signs of insecurity. Angela was an unusual paradox at that office. Always had been, always would be. She held an MBA, MBA and an engineering license, and now, with the passing of, the enge of Engineer Lopez, she was the managing director. The two were never close, and Brissa never believed the woman ever liked her much. Angela was a little older than Brissa by about six or eight years. With her green eyes and fair complexion, Angela's high cheekbones gave her a rather exotic appeal. From Brissa's perspective, Angela was an attractive and ambitious woman who walked and talked with a high level of expectations when it came to leadership and control. She appeared to be cultured, but every now and then a provincial tinge appeared despite her efforts to hide it. Brissa felt confused and excited, and her hangover still pounded from somewhere inside the deep, deep, res, deep recesses of her brain. She again glanced into the mirror at the end of the hallway and frowned. The woman looked aged, tired, run down, and weak. Will you succeed, Brissa? Brissa asked her reflection. The reflection did not answer back. She rode the elevator to the ground floor and entered one of the stores. After buying a small bottle of vodka, she carefully placed it inside her handbag. Across the street sat a bistro. She walked over to the place that was eclectic and housed an urban bar and sat near a corner where she faced a man who refused to stop staring at her. A whiskey sour, Brissa said before changing her words to, I mean, plain orange juice. The stranger was rather tall and rough looking. His brownish gray eyes gazed into his coffee for only a moment before glancing back up. His intense stare penetrated deeply through her inner being without even a blink. Disheveled hair combed unevenly and wearing a wrinkled shirt, he reminded her of a cowboy or a farmer or a rancher or who knows what. He looked completely out of place in the upscale bistro, and for that matter, out of place in such a big city. As she watched, the stranger watched her, a strong hand jerked Brissa backwards. She gaps as she tried to steady herself. She turned and stared directly into her ex-husband's eyes. You will never work that project, Mourinho stated firmly. He squinted and a large scowl covered his face. A wave of triumph washed, washed over Brissa and she smiled. Her ex-husband looked defeated and it sent waves of success all through her. She glanced at him and smirked. To her surprise, the love that once filled her with wonderment and a sense of longing no longer seemed to torment her. She felt nothing for the man, no love and no hate, just nothing. A beer, 
Mourinho shouted out to the bartender before sitting down next to Brissa. The enigmatic-looking man from the next table slapped his hand between Mari Mourinho and his beer. He winked at Brissa before frowning at Mourinho. Leave, Brissa stated firmly. The miss is asking you to leave, the man said, glaring at Mourinho. Mourinho looked up at him and squinted. He huffed a few times before standing. Brissa chuckled because she understood that her ex would never push for a fight, not in this way. You, Mourinho grumbled and pointed directly at Brissa. Mourinho stumped out of the brith bistro, never once looking back. The stranger glanced over at the bartender and asked for the bill. He leaned over and whispered to Brissa, It seems you have enemies, miss, named Sebastian Salgurio. He extended a hand. But Brissa Murillo, she stared at the hand and smiled. Take care of yourself. The man tapped on his cowboy hat as if to say goodbye. He walked out and into the light without looking back. She sighed. What a shitty day. The bartender nodded. Cab, please. Your new friend already paid. The bartender chuckled. Thank you for listening to the first couple of chapters of Habits That Haunt Me. I hope you enjoy it. If you did enjoy it, you can definitely go online and pre-order your copy today. And it should be released sometime in November. So we're so close to getting it out and it is so exciting. It's always exciting to release a new book. And uh, if you're an author and you've been receiving rejection letters left and right, uh, give us a try. Uh, that's why the name of our company is called Indigner House. We're a little bit on the indignant side. But, um, yeah, we're looking for new voices. We're looking for new authors. The only thing that we ask is that the authors work with us so that we can help improve your craft and so that it's a book that people want to read and a book that people enjoy and a book that you can be proud of. So if you, uh, if you have something out there you'd like to submit, submit. Send it to submissions at indignerhouse.com and we will definitely review it. And uh, we have recently created a new contest. It'll be running every single year. Entry is from September through March. I know it's long. We did that for a reason. That's so colleges can work with students um, during their semester courses uh, in their creative writing classes. But that doesn't mean that you, the general populace, cannot submit something to our uh, writing competition. So if you're interested in that, and it has great prizes, and it you will be published if uh, you're one of the, the lucky awardees. Um, and so go ahead and check it out at indignerhouse.com. Uh, our information on our writing contest is up there. So we're real excited about that too. But please, if you have something to submit, submit it and we will take a look at it. Thank you and have a great evening, great morning, great day, great whatever, wherever you are.